Greetings Whiskey Hounds, welcome to Whiskey Whistle. I'm your host Mark and this is Whiskey Review number 93. If this is your first time tuning in to Whiskey Whistle, thanks for joining in. And uh, to all of the returning subscribers, thank you so much for your continued support. Um, now today we're going to be looking at, um, well, not exactly a famous Scotch whiskey distillery, but a very excellent one and one with a very long history and that is called Glengarry. And uh, now if you're looking at the box, you may be saying, hmm, it doesn't say Glengarry. And you're right. Uh, in terms of, well, an English perspective, this looks like Glen uh, Garioch or Glen Garioch. Uh, but in fact, Glen Geary is the cl uh, correct pronunciation. And this, um, this is from the Doric dialect of, um, uh, of Scots, I guess. Uh, for the people who speak uh, the native language of Scotland. Um, now, I think I've written that down here somewhere. We'll get into that in a little while. Let's get this poured first of all. And uh, I have found uh, some trusty Glen Cairn glasses here in Winnipeg. I am currently holidaying here in my hometown and um, quite happy with the whiskey selection here. Uh, not that happy with the whiskey prices. Uh, this is the state run. Uh, Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries, who run the uh, liquor marts as they're called here in Winnipeg. Here we go. Okay, that's a good 40 milliliters. Very healthy pour. Uh, very nice cork. It's got a wood cap and uh, the founding date right there on the on the cap. Uh, it's cork. It's not composite. Not sure if that is the best these days, however. Uh, it seems like the drinks industry is leading uh, toward, uh, sort of going towards uh, screw caps, which may be better for uh, a number of reasons. Um, you know, I'm sure some of you have experienced having a cork break. Uh, that's pretty annoying. There's also um, the, uh, the worry about uh, cork, uh, kind of cork taint, um, which can be known as corked whiskey. So corked wine is something that nobody wants to drink. And um, well, of course, corked whiskey would also be equally unpleasant. That's when you get some kind of a cardboard-esque uh, smell coming from uh, the whiskey when you open the bottle. If you notice that right off the bat, take it back. No cork uh, whiskey noticing, uh, noticed at all here. Very, very pleasant aroma. Slightly peated. Um, now, we're gonna let that sit for a little while. This, by the way, you know, Glen Gary, I didn't, I didn't mention the name of the, the whiskey. This is the Glen Gary, uh, Glen Gary Founders Reserve, 1797 Founders Reserve, as it's known. And I've got things falling over. A little bit windy here. In Winnipeg today. Hopefully that doesn't affect the sound quality too much. Sorry for all the banging. We'll just leave that here I think. Um, let's let that breathe a little bit. This is 48% ABV. It is non-chill filtered and it says so on the box. Uh, in fact I don't see it on the bottle. Uh, however uh, it is on the box so um, uh, we'll leave it at that. Uh, no mention of um, uh, the the color and color wise this is quite a, a deep gold tone okay and uh, as I mentioned 48% ABV an airplane flying overhead I guess I'm reading the flight path um, here in uh, in St. Patel in Winnipeg in fact I won't mention anything else about where I am hmm yeah let's look at get a little bit of uh, breathing done before we uh, look at it okay so 1797 this is the founding date although it looks as though uh, 1794 is kind of when operations sort of began um, and it's located in um, uh, Old Meldrum in uh, Aberdeenshire this is in the valley of the Geary um, and um, um, this area Aberdeenshire is uh, famous for producing Scotland's finest barley and uh, it is known as uh, the granary of Aberdeenshire uh, that area so interesting um, 1768 
uh, the distillery had to stop due to water shortage and uh, then they rectified that by finding a new uh, spring which has been called the silent spring because it is neither seen nor heard wonder how they found it and um, uh, there is a uh, um, well a very interesting character I believe running the show over there uh, for Morrison Bowmore who is the owner of this distillery which in turn is owned by Suntory uh, Beam Suntory owned, owned by Suntory out of uh, Japan and uh, and her name is Rachel Berry and you'll see a photo of her uh, passing through on the photos there hopefully you can see the photos well I've noticed in my last couple of, review, of reviews that the, uh, the photo quality was a little bit poor because of the reflection. So I've tried to get the better, a better angle for that uh, this time around. Uh, anyway, and um, this design is a, actually a fairly new design for the company. And I've got the older design here. Uh, so this is the, uh, the former uh, design of Glen Geary. Okay, so that's the former. That'll be the next review, in fact. Uh, and this is the new one. Redesigned package as well as reformulated, um, reformulated whiskey at a higher ABV, which is great. Uh, 48%. You know, that's two more than uh, the necessary uh, to have a nice, clear, unchill filtered whiskey. So you're getting quite a bit of extra bang for your buck there compared to the usual 40%. Um, so, well, from 40 anyway, you're getting roughly 20% more. When you consider um, the fact that uh, out, of, out, of the, out of the still, it's coming out at about 65%, let's say, you're actually getting quite a bit more, quite a, quite a lot more closer to uh, that, um, uh, we'll call it still proof. Uh, the the proof at which it comes out of the still so anyway very 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 great okay onto the nose before that we'll have a short advertisement and uh, stay tuned welcome back okay so Glen Geary Founders Reserve 1797 Founders Reserve 48% ABV non chill filtered let's give it a whiff shall we it's very fragrant even from afar and um, the thing I get the most uh, from this is cherry. Lots of cherry flavors. Uh, cherry scents, I should say. And um, from my tasting notes and from what I'm smelling here now, there's also something a little bit chocolatey about it too. So I've written here, cherry Tootsie Roll Pops, um, as well as cherry liqueur, uh, cherry kirsch. Um, some sherry wine vinegar and uh, there's a little bit of Highland peat uh, evident here it's not very strong most people wouldn't recognize this as peat and um, for the Koreans in the audience and there are some about 10% uh, there's a little bit of again meishil meishil chu kind of a smell the smell of um, um, Asian plum wine or Korean plum wine. Oh, and uh, sour cherry and vanilla gummies, gummy bears. So a little bit candy, a little bit fruity, slightly smoky, not very much, but a little bit, a little bit, and um, a little bit of a Korean connection there. Very nice. I quite like this smell. It's got a good freshness, and this is something that you could probably spend a few, well, tens of minutes anyway, uh, smelling the whiskey before you tasted it. Mm. And there's something a little bit spicy in there as well. Well, let's give that a try. Cheers to Miss Rachel Berry. That was her name, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Mmm. Starts out sweet and spicy. It's got quite a bit of power behind it, powered by that 48% ABV. Um, it's not sharp, however, 
and um, uh, for the flavor profile written here sweet cherry golden kiwi um, it builds nutty walnut and chestnut a little bit sour slightly dry not very much peat at all if any uh, is noticed on the palate uh, in my opinion and um, well, I wrote there little anyway uh, not as evident on the palate as it is on the nose let's go back in there Hmm. Yes, yeah, sweet and spicy. Gets a little bit sour and dry towards the end. Um, I'm really happy with saying that that's cherry and uh, and kiwi. Um, you know, and there's a bit of vanilla in there woven through as well. The chocolate I'm finding on the nose, I don't really notice so much uh, on the palate, but that nuttiness is certainly quite uh, quite enjoyable. Hmm. Lena, close the door, sweetie. Mm, I'm working, sweetie. You go back inside. Go on back inside, sweetie. Here, come here. Well, folks, here is my second daughter, Lena. Lena, say hello. Say hello to the camera there. Hi. Okay, now you go back inside, okay? There you go. Bye-bye. That was Lena, and she loves uh, Frozen, like most little girls. And, uh, well, wasn't that interesting? <laughs> and I don't know if you could hear, you could also hear my, my third daughter, Yes, I've got three daughters. My third daughter uh, not feeling so well today. She had a bit of a rough sleep last night for some reason. Anyway, sorry for the interruption. Now the finish here, a um, little bit nutty, some vanilla, a little bit creamy as well. And I've written roasted chestnut and vanilla uh, with a creamy texture. Creamy sort of a leftover feeling in your mouth. Hmm. Quite nutty and sweet. Very, very nice. Okay. Now it's time to add a little bit of water. And I've, how much have I got left there? Let's say 30 milliliters. I think we can safely add half a teaspoon, like so. I could probably do a little more. I find I don't really like having too, too much water um, mixed into the whiskey. Of course, it depends on the whiskey. I mean, if you're talking about cask strength, uh, you may be able to add a little bit more. But 48%, I think you don't need much more than about, um, you know, 10% of the volume, maybe a little bit less added as water is what I mean. Let that mix up here. So I mentioned I'm here in Winnipeg. And in fact, it's August 1st today. So happy August, everyone. No, August, August 2nd. Oh, it's August 2nd. <laughs> uh, yes, yesterday was a holiday, a civic holiday, no name to it uh, as of yet. Um, so it was nice having a day off. Lots of birds uh, going crazy over here. Anyway, beautiful day, the sun's shining, slightly overcast, some big puffy clouds coming and going. Okay, how about with water? Let's check out the nose here now, and we'll have one more short word from our sponsors right here. Okay, welcome back. On to the nose. Glen Geary 1797 Founders Reserve with water. I'm at the epicenter of a meeting of birds here or something. Mm-hmm. Well, it adds to the ambiance, I hope. Okay. Well, it gets a bit fruitier. And I've written here that sherry really comes out. Now, I'm pretty sure that's a mix of sherry and uh, bourbon casks. 
but um, it could also be that just simply the character uh, of this particular whiskey it seems to have a lot of darker fruits uh, evident and uh, you get more of that with water so I wrote here it's sweet and the sherry really comes out so a lot more cherry and there was a lot to begin with so and um, the the peat that I noticed at neat is virtually gone okay on to the palate cheers to all of you hmm The sweetness really dominates now. And I've written here, cherry and sherry. Almost no sourness or bitterness. Uh, vanilla, cherry, and a little bit of chocolate now. Hmm. Just gonna add a couple of drops more. See if we can coax a little bit more, a little bit more of that chocolate note coming. Interestingly, I can smell a little bit more of the um, uh, the oak here now. Personally, the oak here is certainly uh, of a very good quality. Um, it's quite active, probably mostly first fill. Uh, there could also be some virgin oak at play here, I wonder. I know they're um, uh, just recently or about to release a virgin oak variety. Okay, let's try that one more time. Mm hmm. Kind of like cherry, vanilla, and chocolate ice cream mixed, perhaps. Almost like Neapolitan. Okay, how about the finish? With water, you get a little bit more of a spice kick in the finish. Uh, largely fruit and nut, um, but quite a bit of dryness now. Um, so fairly subtle but interesting change between the neat version and uh, with water. Worth trying, most definitely. Okay, so how about the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Glen Geary uh, 1797 Founders Reserve? Uh, well, uh, that is going to be 87 out of 100. 87 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Glen Geary 1797 Founders Reserve. And uh, I think that this is uh, a whiskey that um, a person who is, you know, not well, uh, not well on the way uh, with their whiskey tasting, but let's say, uh, let's say they've tried all of the um, uh, the big brands. And um, uh, and they enjoy the space side and some of the Highland uh, region, and they want to try something next. So what next? This would be an excellent, excellent thing to try. First of all, um, you're getting the least expensive offering, which it has no age statement, um, and you're getting that at a higher ABV without any chill filtration. So you're already well ahead of excuse me, ahead of the big brands for their 12-year-old uh, offerings, 10 and 12-year-old offerings. Um, so I think that would be a, a good step up in terms of the strength and a good introduction to uh, non-chill filtered whiskey uh, and also a departure from um, a single single wood. Uh, so moving in towards uh, using a combination of, uh, of different casks. 
so I think that would be great for someone, as I said, who is about midway in their journey in Scotch whiskey. Um, I quite like it. And, uh, well, just a quick little bit of history before I, I sign out here. Uh, about a year ago, a year and a half ago, was the first time that I tried Glengarry, and that was this bottle right here, which has been on the shelf at my uh, Auntie Adrian's bar, uh, and it's been waiting there since, because there's nobody else in the family that, um, uh, that drinks a lot of uh, uh, single malt whiskey. So that was where I started, and um, I had come from uh, being almost a uh, dedicated fan of one particular distillery before that. Um, I won't mention the name. And so tried this one and I was really really happy with it. I really enjoyed it and I thought that it was different and interesting and uh, and and tasty. Um, so I had been waiting to find uh, Glen Geary uh, in Seoul, South Korea where I, I, I reside and couldn't find any. So coming home this summer, um, well, I knew that I would be getting uh, that one because uh, they've got a fair, fairly abundant stock of it uh, here in Manitoba. Anyway, uh, so this was what got me interested in Glengarry. And th in fact, this one is 40% the, uh, the minimum. And it's eight years old, which is, uh, you know, a little bit underage in terms of the uh, the, the marketability of, of the whiskey um, and it's uh, well anyway not exactly what one would call um, you know a heavy hitter in terms of uh, what people look for today and I guess that's probably why they've repackaged it for uh, uh, for today's uh, connoisseurs okay anyway so uh, the next review which will happen um, in succession after this one will be the Glen Geary eight-year-old former bottling former the older bottling okay so anyway thanks for tuning in and uh, be sure to like the video and if you haven't subscribed yet please do so uh, there's a link you can click right down there to subscribe and uh, uh, let me know what you think if you've tried this or if you have any other recommendations for future reviews okay so thanks a lot for tuning in and we'll see you next time